Hi everybody, Derek Christensen here. I'm the owner of Legion Law, an estate planning and probate firm in Dallas, Texas. Today I wanted to talk to you about affidavits of airship. But before I dive into that, I wanted to let you know how to reach out to me. You can email me directly, Derek at D-E-R-E-K at LegionLawPLLC.com or you can find me on my website, www.LegionLawPLLC.com. So with that, let's dive right in. So affidavits of airship are actually very, very nice. I like them. I like them a lot. <laughs> and the reason why is because if you do them correctly, you can avoid probate or at least a large part of probate. One of the most common problems in probate is that you own real estate and real estate needs to get transferred and transfers require authorization. Now, affidavits of airship are kind of a way to get around that because authorization almost always looks like, hey, we need to go through probate. We need to go before a judge, file an application, uh, file documents with the court, do a hearing, pay thousands of dollars, et cetera, et cetera. So that's not fun. You don't want to do that. And if you can't avoid that type of probate, the, the very comprehensive form of probate, then do it. Try to skip it as much as you can. So a small estate affidavit is a great way to approach that. I've made a video on that. However, um, that has different criteria than affidavits of airship. Affidavits of airship are, well, I'll break it down for you. An affidavit is just a document where you make a bunch of statements and then at the very end you say, I promise what I'm saying is true. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's, that's all an affidavit is. It's not special. But an affidavit of airship is where you say, all right, there are certain criteria I need to include in here. Usually it's general description of assets, um, family tree, marriage history, um, I don't know, addresses of loved ones, who's supposed to receive what, what shares are they supposed to receive, et cetera, et cetera. These criteria, and it varies from affidavit to affidavit, but generally speaking, when you're trying to use an affidavit of airship, you can use it in uh, many contexts that allow it. So for instance, an affidavit of airship can be used for a vehicle transfer. I made a, vi a video about that as well, but affidavit of airship in a vehicle context is gonna ask for different information and have you swear to different types of information than an affidavit of airship in a um, real estate context. So real estate, um, you would want to use an affidavit of airship if you just have real estate. And that's literally it, if that's all you're worried about. This often happens when you have um, jointly owned, so uh, um, for instance, this is one of my clients I had once upon a time, but there's man and wife, they're married, and everything they own is joint. So they're joint on bank accounts, they're joint on retirement accounts, they're joint on everything. Uh, everything went to the wife and the husband is still on the deed of the house that they own together. So with him dead, that means that if she's trying to sell the house, she can't. She can't sell the house because she needs his signature. So really the only concern we had was the, the house. That was it because of the bank accounts, retirement, everything else was taken care of. So just this house was just the concern. And that being just the concern, we could use an affidavit of airship to transfer the right of selling the house from, well, an affidavit of airship does not transfer ownership to the other person. It just is making a statement that this will happen if we did go through probate, therefore trust me on this one. And some people take it. Some title companies are okay with that. Some, some accept them, some of them don't. Um, some buyers will not accept it. Some uh, so because it's just an affidavit. It's just you saying, "I promise, I pinky promise, this is true." Now it doesn't again automatically mean you're going to transfer that asset over. It's not a legally binding document, and so it's kind of a light form of probate that can lead into issues later on. And that's kind of a con about uh, affidavits of airship. But again, most people accept them. So if you can pull it off, you should try to pull it off because an affidavit of airship again makes it very quick. If I did not do an affidavit of airship in that circumstance, then I'd have to do either um, a muniment of title or a application to probate a will, and um, all of those required going before a judge and testifying and paying lots of money. So we pulled it off. Thankfully, we had a title company that was willing to work with us, and uh, that affidavit of airship worked. But again, you really only can use it if you have like one asset of a concern. If you have multiple bank accounts that you gotta access and a retirement account that's not in your name um, and you uh, have the house as well in addition to cars, you're probably gonna go through a form, uh, a different form of probate, like I mentioned, muniment of title, airship proceeding, probate for letters of administration or testamentary, uh, all those things, all those unfortunate types of probate are going to happen. So 
again, affidavits airship, use them if you can. If you can, it's almost always because you have one, maybe two assets that you're worried about and you can't access them, but you can access everything else. Uh, and you just have just one little thing you gotta take care of. If that's one little thing, then you can, an affidavit of airship might work. So definitely check with an attorney. Uh, again, there is required language for every single affidavit. Every type of affidavit for each type of asset has different types of language in it, and you wanna make sure you just do it right the first time. Because what you're doing, again, is you're making a declaration to the world. I swear what I'm saying is true. I notarize this document. And that's literally it. But if you say the wrong things in that document, then somebody else can come back later and say, hey, you did this wrong, and now we need that house. You know, now you're in trouble for selling the house wrong, or you sold the car to the wrong person, or whatever, right? So you can get in trouble if you do it wrong. So work with an attorney, make sure it's done right, measure twice, cut once, that's my motto. <laughs> so uh, with that, you can reach out to me uh, at my email, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at legionlawplc.com, or you can find me at my website, where you can go to our Contact Us page and schedule a free consultation over the phone uh, directly on my calendar at www.legionlawpllc.com. So with that, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.